Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Tech Notes. Today's episode will cover mobile terrestrial LiDAR from HERE Technologies. It differs from traditional airborne data in a few ways. It will be of a much higher density, will have co-registered RGB imagery, and most notably, it scanned horizontally from the ground. This gives a much better picture of the facades of buildings, and because of the angle, can capture features that often can't be captured from above. Let's take a closer look at this here data. Zooming in on this data, you can see each point has been appended with the RGB value from the co-registered camera. As I rotate around, you can also see because it's horizontally scanned that we get lots of data under the portico here, and actually depending on conditions can actually get inside the glass building as well. We can see the high density scan has picked up a few people on the ground as well. One of the tools in QT Modeler which will prove useful is the X-ray tool, because not only does this data have RGB, but we still have the height colors and even intensity values to look at. I want to click on our X-ray button. The X-ray window allows you to display exterior and interior content differently. So in this case, in my exterior content, I'm leaving my RGB values, but my interior content will be displaying my height color alone. This lets me scan through the data pretty clearly. I get the benefit of the RGB spectral information, while being able to easily identify features of various height using the height colors in the inset. Here I can identify some street lamps and some traffic lights. I'm going to zoom in a little closer. And now I'm going to close my x-ray window. As many differences as there are between mobile terrestrial and traditional airborne data, there are still many similarities and they can be operated in much the same ways. I'm going to generate a height profile here. and this generates a cross-section of my point cloud. I'm going to expand my width from one quarter meter up to two meters and click Get Buffer Points. This gives me a really nice slice of this data and I can visualize that as well by clicking the Mask to Area in 3D button. And from this window, I can take measurements as well. So if I want to calculate the height of this light post, drag a line from the top to the bottom and I get a height of just over 10 and a half meters. I can use my scroll wheel to zoom in and my right click to pan. And I can measure my height clearance from underneath this traffic light to the ground. And you can see it's right at 5 meters. You can also take measurements at a much finer resolution. I can zoom in here and actually see the curb height. Again, use my measurement tool and get the height of the curb at right around 10 centimeters. I'm going to turn my mask back off to bring the rest of my point cloud back on. I'm going to close this window. As mentioned, this data doesn't only have RGB, we can also get back to the intensity values. I'm going to go ahead and click the QTA button and color by intensity. I can also make some adjustments to the lighting to brighten up the scene and click OK. So here we get some additional information. Before we were looking at the co-registered RGB values, the spectral information that was appended to it. But right now, all the grayscale you're seeing is from the intensity. This is all from the laser itself. All of that information got collected and stored within the last files. And that's it for this episode's Tech Notes, and thanks for watching.